we had back then. And uh, the cost has been the same for the last 20 years. And guess what? It ain't working. It ain't working. So I, I think I've hit on an idea that will that will make what we're doing or what we need to do work. And that and that is this. First of all, I tell folks we, we've got to redefine the problem. People talk about homelessness like it's one big monolithic group, and it's and it's really not. In fact, I've I've divided it up into three groups. I call one group the houseless. And and those are the folks who truly are in a, uh, you know, because of some financial calamity or or whatever, they're they're down on their luck. They're out of their house. They need help. They want jobs. They need jobs. They want a home. they They would fight to get in a home. And, and that's the group that the homeless folks, the homeless advocates, normally talk about. Uh, and, and those are the kind of folks that need a Salzbacher type service downtown. Those are the folks that need a Clara White type service downtown, where they're, you know, they can get retrained for a job uh, and, and have food and shelter while they're in the process of getting back on their feet. That's that's fine. But I think what you all know and, and, and what I know is that's not the group that we have problems with. The group that we have problems with are, and this is the second group, and they're on the opposite end of that scale. I would put them on a scale. To say the opposite end of that scale is hobos. I'm going to call them what they are. They're hobos. Now, they don't want a job. They're not looking for a job. Most of them won't even go to the shelters because if you go to the shelters, you can't be drinking and you can't, uh, you know, you can't do dope and all that stuff. They don't want to go to the shelters except to eat in the afternoon and in the evening. But beyond that, they don't want any control over their lives. They just want to live out there. They want to sleep behind your businesses or sleep in front of your been reading my emails. Defecate on the sidewalk, urinate in the fountains, all that stuff that they do. And there's a reason that they all congregate downtown. It's because downtown is what I call a TRE. It's a target-rich environment. They have targets down there. Who are they targeting? The people that are the people that are down there working and walking by and running businesses like you, your customers, they're their target. And the target is who they can get money off of. If they want to give money, to go buy the beer that they want, that kind of stuff. They don't have to worry about eating with that money because all these facilities down there are already feeding them. So they don't have to save their money to eat. They're they're, they're panhandling for money not to eat. They're paying for money to drink because they can't go to Saltbacher and get a beer. They can't go to the city rescue mission and get a beer. So, what I'm, so here's the problem. When they do these things that create all of these problems for us downtown, they say, well, well come in and you know, let's get aggressive with the rest. Let's put them all in jail. Folks, we've been doing that for 20 years. And it doesn't work for this reason. Number one, what we have to quit doing is putting our value system on that group. That group does not have the same value system that everybody in this room has. That group doesn't care about responsibility. They don't care about getting a job. They don't care about having a nice residence to live in. They don't care about those things. They don't want those things. What they what they want is to be able to panhandle and get the money that they want to go get, you know, whatever they want to drink or smoke or whatever. So we also want to treat them with our value system and say, well, you know, if we if one of us went to jail, it'd be horrific. Well, so we assume that it's horrific for them to go to jail. I got news for you, folks. These guys. They don't mind going to jail. They've been to jail 50, 100 times. They don't care about going to jail. 
Jail means absolutely nothing to them. In fact, you know what they call it? So, somebody tell me what they call it? Three hot, three, hot, three, three cot. Yeah. That's what they call it. There's four if you really feed them up, right? But uh, three hots and a cot. I mean, that's the way they refer to jail. So, so here's the way the system works now. We get out there and we've made, I don't know, well over 150, I think, or 160 back in May when I first ran these numbers. Some number, a large number of arrests. We'll just say a large number of arrests have been made. But here's the problem. We put them in jail, which they don't care about going to jail. They get their three hots and a cot. They get time served and they're out in about 10 days. They walk right out the door over here at, on Forsyth Street, four blocks from the problem. That's why there's no deterrent in an arrest. They don't mind going to jail and getting fed and sleeping and you know being taken care of for a few days. And then we let them back out and they go, and they're literally four blocks from the problem. So here's my recommendation. What we do is find a rural area and provide some services out there. Look, I, I want these folks taken care of. They need food, they need shelter. But what I will do is I will create a misdemeanor releasing facility at this facility. And I'm not gonna release a misdemeanor from pre-trial pre detention facility again. They will have to go to this facility that's 12 miles away from downtown, or even further if we pick them up on the on the south side. Because folks, I got news for you too, and I'm sure you probably already know this. This problem is not just downtown. We have these guys living in our woods all over this city. And we've got to start dealing with them in a way that creates some deterrence when they go to jail. And the way we do that is we put them in jail. When they commit one of those violations, because somebody asked me, they said, well, Sheriff, how are you going to separate the houseless from the hobo? And I said, that's easy. I'm going to do it through their behavior. The arrest is what's going to separate them. The, the houseless guys aren't the ones defecating on the sidewalk. That's not the houseless guys doing that. That's the hobos doing that. And so when I make that arrest that we've made for 20 years, the problem is we, we let them right back out right here. Now what we'll do is I'll take them out there 12 miles and let them go from that releasing facility. And they have a couple choices. They are free to stay there and enjoy the resources we provide, shelter, food, or they can walk back downtown, or they can walk back to their camp on the west side or wherever they want to go. They're free to do that. This is America. But if they commit another quality of life crime, I'm going to pick them up, I'm going to put them in jail, they're going to get time served, they're going to have another 12-mile walk. That 12-mile walk will put some deterrence in that arrest. They're going to get tired of walking 12 miles back to downtown. So we put this facility in the middle of nowhere, as far out as we can put it. And that is where I'll, I'll create a misdemeanor releasing facility for all these folks. We'll have services out there. Now, they're talking about building a, a, a a, a day, day center. center or whatever over uh, over Sarbacher. Look, no. right. I can tell you no. that ain't gonna work. No. That right. ain't gonna work. No. And here's why. They say, well, they can come down here and play chess and checkers and do whatever they do at those tables. They're not gonna do that. You know why? Why would they not go down there? They're ruled. Because they got well, to go rules, handle and get their beer and their beer. You pie. can't drink, you can't spit, you can't fight, you That's can't right. use you drugs. Down here. No money. No money. No. That's not a TRE. Folks, they're going to go to the nearest TRE, the nearest target rich environment where they can bum money. That's where they're going. And so, what we got to do is move them as far out into the middle of nowhere, and then they, they've got a couple choices. Like I said, they can either stay there and enjoy the resources, they can hook it, you know, 12 miles back to downtown. But, but, and they're free to stay, as long as they don't commit a violation, but if they panhandle, 
aggressively panhandle, do any of these other things, we catch them sleeping on the park benches, any of this other stuff, right now those arrests don't mean a thing. All we're doing is burning tax dollars for nothing. For nothing. This will remove the problem and create a little deterrent for them in going to jail. Then, if they get tired of that walk, maybe they'll walk to another city where we don't have to deal with it. I'm fine with that too. But we can't just continue to, to cycle them through this jail and let them in and out, let them in and out, and provide all these services right downtown and then, and then you know, wonder why we have this homeless problem downtown. Or really a hobo problem. It's not a homeless problem, it's a hobo problem. And it's all over this city. We, we have tons and tons of trash that we go in and clean out these hobo villages in the woods. And let me tell you, they break into our cars regularly. A lot of our auto burglaries are by these homeless guys who come out of the woods in the evening, go to, go to hit a couple cars, get some cash, so they go buy beer. And they go back to their hobo camp. We've caught several of them like that. So, what, what I'm looking for is some support for the idea that, look, don't build this thing downtown. Right. That is not going to work. That is not going to work. That's kind of going back to what we've already tried before. And uh, we've done that for 20 years. We've got to put a deterrence in the arrest, and that is relocating. So, with that, I'll, I'll throw it open for any questions or comments. Jerry? What kind of accommodations do you plan out there? <laughs> well, I, I mean, that would be, uh, you know, I've seen these strung buildings where you pour a pad and you got a big, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, kind of like that stuff that got stretched over Metro Park. And all I know is it's called a sprung building. But you can air condition it and, and, and do everything else. And, and put a barrack style thing out there, you can have you know, you can have a lot of folks and get them out of the weather and that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you have any ideas where we could do this? No, but I'll tell you, uh, Councilman Ray Holt called me today when he heard about this meeting and he said, look, I've got a lot of area in my uh, uh, district. I would be, I'm in favor of this idea and I would like to see that happen. So he would help us find, find a location. Sure, you got the money? That's what I thought that. No. No. But, I, I, actually, I think we do have the money. It, it's now being put into other services downtown. Move those services out of downtown. Look, what? I, I think we keep the folks who, are, who want to serve the houseless and, and teach people jobs like uh, Claire White. Those, those programs we need downtown. They need to be that those, that group needs to be downtown because they need that public transportation too to get around to find the jobs and that kind of thing. But but that's not the hobo group. They, they don't they don't need that and they don't need to be downtown. We don't need to be having uh, you know these facilities where they just feed up. Uh, we don't need any of that downtown. Move all of that. Take all the resources that the city right now puts into those services downtown and move it to this facility wherever it's at. So it's not, I don't think we're talking about new dollars. I think we're just talking about redirecting some of the dollars that we're spending now. I was recently in San Antonio uh, for a year and a half and they implemented the same kind of thing. Now it came to fruition right after I left, uh, but it might be interesting to reach out and find out how that works. San Antonio? San Antonio? It's a similar size city and area and population <coughs> and with a much worse uh, hobo problem because the river walk there. Yeah. Um, but they did, they took all of the services and moved them as far out in the perimeter as they could go. Um, I've heard that it hasn't been perfect, but it's, but it's helped. But it might be something that's worth reaching out to them and seeing how they made no, it. No, look, it, yeah, it, look, and, this and is they, not going to be perfect because some, yeah. some of them are going to make that walk back downtown. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, it was funded through an additional bed tag, I think a half cent on, on hotel rooms or something like that, that was, because it was becoming such a deterrent to tourism and, and right. it was out of control. Well, see, I, I, I tell you, I, I, even, even if it took something like that, I, I think we can find the money to, to, to do this. 
uh, and, and most of it's a redirection of, of dollars. I, I don't think it's, it's two dollars, but but I will uh, I'll have some folks look at the San Antonio and see what their experience has been. Who's the third group? You mentioned three groups. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the third group is, is the, the severely mentally ill or uh, severely addicted. And those groups, you know, we, we need to create another faculty for the Florida Service Community Treatment Team. Uh, we need more uh, of our um, uh, com local community uh, facilities for, for the mentally ill. Uh, the, the assisted living facilities that, that have a, uh, a mental health license. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, part of the problem that we have with, with that population, and, and don't hold into these numbers now, but I guarantee you they're, they're still very close. Florida is like at the bottom of the list of, of per capita spending for mental health issues. And our district, District 4, was at the bottom of Florida. So, we're at the bottom of the bottom when it comes to pr providing uh, resources for that population. Now, I'll, but I'll tell you this. Interestingly enough, if you look at the at the general fund dollars and local tax dollars that are being spent on that population, we're higher than, than most counties. And and I think it's because we we see the need, so we address it. You know, this this community has been very good about trying to step up and address those needs for the mentally ill. Uh, and, and we have a lot of resources out there, but most of it we're, we're paying for on a local dime. Where, you know, a lot of these other, other counties are getting more money from the state to, to, to do those things. So I think some of this, you know, we need to address through Tallahassee as well. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. With Mental Health Resource Center Homeless Program. Or when you're talking about housing services after reentry Center, are you talking about us being down there and if so would we be down there for rent free because our case managers and our agency we're going to incur more of a cost of travel and right now i've had case managers already quit just based on mileage and you know yeah. salary yeah. all that kind of stuff the other thing is be working with the severely mentally ill well the mentally ill aren't going to go to this facility okay. right. that, but that, also this is not for this that group our hands are tied with some of the issues with the severely mentally ill. Oh, no, absolutely. I know. That's why I said right. we need another we fact team. Some need, of the yeah. people they see around downtown and who may be troublesome and unaware of some of the choices they're making, people like us, our hands are tied. We can't right. make them stay in an ALF. We can't make them right. take their medication. So. Yeah, and, and, and look, and, and we, need, we need more assertive community treatment, I believe. But but that's but that's not the group I'm talking about. Uh, uh, moving out to this uh, outer facility, that it, that wouldn't affect you guys at all because that the mentally ill we need to be taken to a crisis stabilization unit, get them back to their ALF, you know, getting them plugged back in with their caseworker, those those sorts of things, which which we do through the jail very well, and, and you guys are great partners in that. But uh, but the population I'm talking about is the, the hobo. And, and I think it's the greater portion of the population. Yes, How can we as business owners downtown help you achieve your, your goal? Well, I, I think, you know, we need to come together with, with, with the council, the mayor's office, uh, you know, maybe put together a, 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 a committee to really look at this, uh, get the homeless advocates involved as well. And, uh, and, and look at how we can redirect some of the dollars because it's, it's going to come down to how you fund it. And, uh, you know, and that's, that, that's an issue that we're just going to have to get more acceptance of. But, but I think if, if it was clear that there was, a, that there was a community will to do this, I think we could find a way to do it. Uh, why can't you just release them at the online? <laughs> well, it's kind of well, you got to release them at a facility. I mean, you, you can't do that to the community. Uh, and I wouldn't want to do that to them. I mean, I, look, a lot of these folks, whether you, whether you like their lifestyle or not, um, you know, they're still human beings. we still got to treat them properly. That's why I want to provide shelter and food and, all, and, and medical care and, and, and all of that. But 
We don't need to be doing it down down where they where they are in a target rich environment. The whole idea, the other reason for putting them in the middle of nowhere is you get them out of a target rich environment where they have an opportunity to do all of this panhandling, all of this theft, you know, breaking into cars and, and, and all of that that they do. That's really what what it's all about. It's not about punishing them or you know, being nasty to them or anything. They call thing your advocate in the downtown community. We've heard a lot of talking about the drinking. I want to express that I'm not only a senior advocate, I'm also a victim this mm -hmm. past week. Uh, just to have the courage to report that you're a victim and stand up gives strength and courage to others to, uh, to do. They have planted such fear in our community with the seniors that they're afraid to act upon, call 911, or give them what. We had a toll bridge going from Newman Street to um, Beaver. You know, you had to pay the toll, and it was blocked with the bicycle. And I said, is this your bicycle? I'm not paying the toll. And I was in my electric wheelchair, and I just went on through, and he was his bicycle. Um, the one thing I haven't heard addressed that is a monumental problem on um, the AME Methodist Church that's 145 years old mm -hmm. is the complete control day and night of that block. And I have filmed videos and tapes and pictures of it how they continue to harass, rob, beat. Like I said, I've been a victim this past week. And usually they just are so grateful to get away from them, they don't report anything. I stood my ground that they scared me so bad, I said, you're going to go to jail. You know, I love you, I choose. You have to choose not to be a victim. And their biggest tool is fear. And when you look out your windows and you see seven days a week, 24 hours a day, drug deals going down. Drug is our problem. From Winn-Dixie all the way up to the Shell Station at Main Street and we know Sam's on Union Street. If I see it and other people see it and we report it how can we have 37 sitting on the uh, wall of the church we have them absolutely in front of you in the wheelchair and she wasn't nothing wrong with her legs her wheelchair was what she used to panhandle she got right up and walked right up the top of the stairs carried her toilet paper, used the bathroom in broad daylight in front of everybody. Number one and number two, use your own toilet paper on the church and it continues to happen on a daily basis. Now that's one block that most seniors that live in the towers and I do not have to go to Win dixie And that's why we need this kind of facility where when they get arrested for that kind of crime, but, we don't release them from right here and they walk two blocks back to that location. But alcohol is a matter of problem, yep. excuse me, sir, yep. but no, the right. drug is right. horrendous. Right. I'm sure. Oh, thank you. You're a small business owner in downtown. Uh, there are four points I want to make. One of them is a follow up from that because to me, the lack of enforcement, there is a lack of enforcement downtown, in my opinion. There are issues with, uh, we've been promised to be cops. We don't see beat cops. We see cars occasionally, but we don't see beat cops. Uh, I've complained about a situation like that where cars park on the sidewalk downtown. Nobody really cares about it. Um, she's talking about that we have people accosting people downtown. Nobody does anything about it. Nobody. I don't know if anybody sees it. Uh, I've also noticed uh, I've seen prostitution downtown, which I see at the west side where I live. Right but I haven't seen it downtown before. Well, well let me ask you this. Through, from January to May, did you see a difference? 
a positive difference? I'm saying right. no, no difference. Okay. But we made 169 arrests now. That's, so that's my point. We can, we can arrest 100, 300 people then. It's not going to matter. But the that's, we've got to move the problem. I, I, oh, I'm in support of that. And you and Angela Corey are uh, your biggest fan. The, but, but the point is... Enforcement's the not the answer. The presence, the enforcement is the answer when there's a deterrent built into that arrest. When it's a, an arrest that just gives them three hots of the cot, it, it is no effect whatsoever. It, it's not even the arrest. It's the presence. Who, who's going to go do what she described if there's somebody around with the shoulder that had the people to do that? Who's going to do that? restaurant. I, okay, I agree completely. Hello. So that's, that's, that's the issue. Is that we just need to look more presence, I believe that. No. But more presence and more police is not going to matter. Because when we arrest them, they come right back. We got to move them. We got to move them. I agree. With that's them. the but answer. That, but now, we can move them through an arrest once we have somewhere else to take them to when they're getting released. But if we're just going to release them at Forsyth Street, that, that. I, I'm in violent agreement with you. Okay. But that, you're going to cause us to do your enforcement for you. No, we'll, no, we'll be there <laughs> doing the enforcement. But right now, it, it, it's not going to have any impact. Just no, there's me. been a. There's been a marked difference in the Henry Plaza area. I think Nikki will attest to this. She has a UPS store on Holmes. I own Jacob Stewart's on the farm, Lauren Adams. And uh, for a long time, we had police cars on the sidewalk on the corner of Adams and Lawrence Street. I know. We went back and forth on that issue. Half of them wanted them, half of them didn't. No, so. no but you got cars back. And thank right. you for that. But we had a problem where the the I guess the hobos or what or whatever this group was, they used the flower pots for urinals, they used right. the doorways for urinals right. and whatever else they had to do with this just to be here and solve. Right. But once we got once you put those cars back up there, a lot of yeah, that yep. stuff has gone away. Because they the people at Dalton they could see I went over and talked in fact I sent you a petition with everybody's name on it. And they would use the bathroom right in their door. Right. But, but let me interrupt you and tell you what happened. Okay. Because this, when, when I was a, I want to say I was a captain downtown, I, I went to a meeting. Uh, Councilwoman Jenny Myrick was the downtown councilwoman. I went to the meeting with some of the downtown people, and they, they, they were talking about the, the hobos in Henry Plaza and what to do about them. They had just come in and put in all the trees. Remember when they first did that? And, and if you remember, what happened when they put all the trees in? All the birds came, and the birds were, you know, doing what birds do all over every night. They're better than the hobos. So, so they called it, yeah, listen up. So, so we, oddly enough, in this meeting, I'm following behind a bird specialist who had been there like a couple months before and told them what you got to do to move the birds out of the trees in the Henry Plaza is come down in the evening when they start to the roost, spray them down with water, and they'll, and they'll leave. Well, they did, and it worked. But right in front of me on that agenda was the people from the Independent Life Building. They were raising hell because all the birds were down, down there and they were flying inside the building. So, it, it, I know. It's true. And so, so I, I listened to this and I thought, wow, this, yeah. And then, and then my issue came up on the agenda. And they basically what they wanted me to do was come in there with, with police and sweep the park at 11 o'clock, at 11 a.m., run everybody out so that the folks that, the business people down there could then use the park to eat lunch and that sort of thing and not have to have these hobos sitting around. And I'm like, two, two problems with that. I said, first of all, there's the, the Constitution. I can't do that. Those people have a right to be in that public park. I can't just go in there and run them out because I don't like the clothes they're wearing. I can't do that. Second thing is, even if I did that, you'd have the same problem you had with the birds. You can run them out of one place, just like putting those cars back over there. You said that you know now they're no longer yeah. urinating in your flower pots, but they're urinating in somebody's flower pot. It's just further down the road. We're glad it's not it's out. So, I, no, I got, I got you. I, I got you. But, but see, when it moves from your business 
to his business, it's still my problem. <laughs> and so I, I want a total solution to this issue and, and it will actually have an impact. And, and just moving it down the street it isn't enough. Um, I've been downtown. I've always um, been downtown. I was on Ivy's um, college board, you know, yeah. 40 years ago, and now I've had a business for eight years. I've been to meeting after meeting. I've been to meetings that you've been to and suggested this before. At our most recent meeting that Denise Lee had, some group is pushing to have this armory done as a day center with showers and lockers. Who is, who is pushing for that? That's what we need to address is that we as a group don't let that happen and we try to get it out in the woods. That is what our goal should be here. We're all on the same page, but some group is pushing for that, Don. That was one of Mayor Payton's ideas. So there's not a committee. It's just an out-in-the-air suggestion just like his. So that's what we need to do is not we all know the problem i go to meeting after meeting right and and we need to have a solution and you right. i've heard you present this before we got to make a committee and don either you lead it or somebody and then we'll get you know the businesses and corporate and 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 i know that brown wants to do something and so it's a different environment, and, right. and we can't talk about it. We've got to make a committee. You've got to get the right people on it, the shakers and the movers, and get something to happen. You know, we own a lot of property out by the city dump, around yeah. the city dump, 301. A lot further yeah. than 12 miles. A little more than 12 yeah. miles. Oh, more than that. But uh, yeah. uh, it's a good location to, to look at to try to put a, something out there for them. Okay, just Chair, I should have identified myself before. I'm Greg Radlinski. I'm here on behalf of Urban Force Feedback. And what my concern is now that I've heard this plan, which I think is a great plan, but the problem is no money, and it's going to take a long time, I think, before we get the committee. We'll study this thing to death. We have yeah. in the last 20 years. And then we'll finally come to some conclusion we'll build it for you. But what about showing the flag between? Now, now and then. And then. You, yeah, just can't say, you can't just say, well, uh, busting them and taking the jail doesn't work because it's hot and it's hot and they're out, so therefore we're not going to do anything. Right. We need, I think, some so force. No. Right. And right. one other idea that I thought of, approached at several other meetings at CPAC, at Shadco, and everywhere that I've had a chance to talk about, is I see a number of police guards come to 501 and all kinds of the day and night. Is there any way that you can have them run through the downtown area on their way to 501? So at least there's a constant presence of the police, even if in a car, not on a plane, which might deter some. Well, we have a long way to go before that facility. So well, we increased our, our bike presence down there. Um, I don't think we increased the walking. No, no we, this we did. We will add two additional. Um, Walking the dogs in the last year and a half, sure. But it, 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 we, we will do what we can in the meantime, but we got to get this plan moving. And, and, and not talk about it for another 20 years. They were talking about this when I was a lieutenant down then. I mean, that's how bad this has been. But, but we try to do the same, we try to build more services for those people. That's not the answer. It's where the services are located. And, you know, we are a destination city for the hobo population. Mm -hmm. But we've come a long way since this one here. Yeah. We got rid of the hotel. We got nice or we, we made a few progress. Yeah. Know, this is just one of the We got okay. Well, this is the hobo. That's right. Uh, short term, can we make uh, Hemming Park and the surrounding area a little less attractive? And as you know, we've been pushing for a long time to remove the balance of benches on Main Street and Duval Street. Uh, property owners and merchants removed the benches on Adams Street and Monroe Street uh, some years ago when it was very effective. Uh, I know I'm, I'm downtown late at night, and um, this is where the problem, <coughs> the troublemakers hang out on those benches, and you're constantly having to patrol them, and as soon as the patrol's gone, they come back. They come right also, in Hemming Park, we don't want to take 
all the benches out. We need to leave some benches in to get rid of those gaming tables and uh, particularly up in the uh, northeast corner, all that needs to go. It's a constant headache for you and for uh, the fire department. Mm -hmm. But that's something that can be done short term right away if you could get through to City Hall and put some in influence on them. You should probably take those out and disperse them some because they're going to go somewhere. Right. Yeah, yeah they, they'll go somewhere but, else. But particularly on the street, there's no need for benches behind the library or on Duval Street right now. They're just hangouts. Yeah. But, but, I, but I think, I, I feel the urgency, and I, and I hope you guys do too, about, you know, look, let's, let's build this facility out in the middle of somewhere quickly. And look, a strong building can be up in a couple months. It's just having the political will to do it. And, and I think a group like this to create the political will to do it. Well, I think Brown would want to do it. I think he... The, the mayor, the mayor uh, I've talked with him about this, and uh, he says that he's on board with it. He really right. is looking for a solution. So, you know... Right. Uh, well, who's going to be on the solution? Isn't that your job? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'll be glad to... I mean, the mayor's it. not going to do anything until yeah. you take him something. And uh, be glad to share, share that something. with him and how well, far he'll go. Well, I don't know. So He's not going to go out and create something like you got to do that. you got to get the people together and take a plan to him. Well, well I think well, the I, fact I, that Denise Lee and Robin Lum called that meeting, that we were shocked because when yeah. we wanted to take the phones out, Denise Lee was the the worst one that didn't want them to go because poor people need a phone and all that. So when she called the meeting... We were so distressed that, okay, here we go. We're just all going to get shot down. She absolutely identified the problem. She knows him in class is it. I'm, I wanted to jump across the table and kiss her. She was so on target. And I think it's because there's a new administration, and they really do want to make a difference. Uh, it was the first meeting in well, many part, meetings. Part of it is I met with every one of them and gave you the same talk I just or gave them the same talk I just gave you. Well, it's and, and it makes sense. And, and look, I, I, I would commit to get with uh, Councilman uh, Redmond, Councilman Holt, because he, I think he's got a lot of that, that, that area as well. Uh, I know you're committed to downtown. Yeah. Uh, I, and, down and, the, and the mayor tells me he has talked with you and heard your solution, and he likes it. Right. So, so you know, let, let, we will find... The three of us will find somebody from the mayor's office to, to represent that end of it, and, and we need to get we need to get moving on this thing. Yes, sir. How are you going to communicate that? Because there's there's very little communication for regular people. So I, I got I got word of this meeting through the downtown events, right. but I, I feel like if you add mm -hmm. something like this to the agenda, you might get a little bit more traction. Okay. Sure. Well, as a downtown council, council person. I will push this as hard as I can, and uh, through DBI and uh, whatever you know, I'm I go to those meetings. I'm on that board and right. get them involved with it. Uh, so you know, they, they should be able to communicate with the downtown businesses and everybody downtown. Excuse me, I that one one perspective I haven't heard yet. Uh, my name's Wade Gaines. I uh, I uh, kind of have a double vested interest in this. I, I manage a wholesale distribution company on Beaver Street. Lachana. Yes, ma'am. One moment, please. Um, my, uh, my wife and I transferred here in January, and we love the downtown area. Yes, ma'am. For what day? We love it. Unfortunately, my friends and my employees think uh, I might need her Yes, service. ma'am. Under what name, please? I think I'm nuts, but I really, really love the city. We want to live there. And, and what time would you like to come in? Your idea, uh, Very uh, good. We'll see you then. So Thank you. But I, I am echoing some we'll of the comments that, um, yes, that uh, we need a little help now. And if I can oh. tell you about one specific uh, situation in, in my case, while well, we have, it's part of my we have a brand new street now, and um, there's we have a lot more parking. And if and if you have any trouble, yes, ma'am. And if you have any trouble, you call the restaurant, and I'll come out and get you a space right away. <laughs> yes, ma'am. They were in last night. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bye bye. We've got it there. We'll 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 look into that. But beyond that, though, as, as a resident there, is is there anything we can do? Volunteer our time. Uh, anything that we can do to to help you, you know, reach the school? Well, I I think the main thing would be uh, talk to your friends and neighbors and explain the the concept to them, because I I, I suspect there will be so you know there are going to be some who want to keep all these services downtown. They want to keep you know. Um, they don't want to change the way they do business, but it needs to change. Well, we, we got to quit being to be informed to stop giving money. I because exactly. I have some mm-hmm. characters exactly. that want to just collect money and we've run them all out of our office. Yeah. You either do work with a case manager or you need to go. But exactly. they, um, the people continue to give money. And, and, and you know, I, I, I tell you, we had an experience uh, out. Um, in Baldwin. We went, we went out to Baldwin. They, we went out there and had several meetings with them after we took over their policing operations. And we were aghast at how many. There must have been like 12 hobo camps out there. And the, 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 what exacerbated the problem was not just that people would give them money, but that then the, the businesses out there would sell them beer. Yeah. I said, no, sell them beer. And so we went out and talked to all the all the businesses out there. We went out, we cut down a lot of the woods and, and mowed and I mean just took out tons and tons of trash, cleaned out twelve hobo I think it was twelve hobo camps. But then but also talked to the business community and said, look, do not sell single containers to, to these guys. Don't do it. You don't have to. And and it's helped tremendously out there. In fact they had a little appreciation thing when I went out for them. Because it, it, it turned it around that much, but you're absolutely right. That's that's the kind of thing that the people, that, that the business people down there need, need, to, need to understand. You can't sell to those guys. You can't be selling alcohol in single containers. Well, the van on their river they have little public houses, posters, and they have little signs that say "Don't sell alcohol." And it lists the ordinance, and then it also states about why not to give them money. Right. Because everything that they're speaking to the drug and alcohol problem. So I don't know if... Yeah, that was another thing that San Antonio did very effectively was that during this build-up to the perimeter center is that all of the hotels <coughs> agreed to put... The, to, we had a flyer and, and not only did we educate the guests coming or the tourists coming into town about the problem, but that... If you'd like to donate money to this facility, right. this is a better way yeah, to help the yeah, homeless. Yeah, you know, if you want to give somebody money, mm-hmm. and, and, a, and a lot of people did. It was yeah, that's a good idea. Thing that to see. Um, how, to, how to donate responsibly. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. understand that if you give it to them, it's going to go to this, but if you, if you, you know, give it here, then, then it will go towards the, the beer and the coke. Yeah. Very good. Because that really is problem as long as you have people this is not as big of a tourist destination obviously as San Antonio but as long as you have people giving them money they're going to keep right. coming back right. you have some panhandling signs downtown that it talks about right the 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 trespass signs yeah. 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 Uh, well until, until we can build it and turn us into the arrest you're spinning your wheels Along those lines, it might not be a bad idea to get JTA to put the panhandling signs in their bus stops, which is a place where they all congregate very much so. And um, uh, I, I'm Pam Smith. I'm with a lad. We're the owners of the AT&T Tower building. We have a million square feet of office space in that building, half of which is empty. I try very hard to lease space uh, downtown and bringing tenants into town with panhandlers. And so, you run around from the state street. Exactly. So I'd like to be involved with this. And in this facility, it wouldn't have to be, could it be a lease facility that maybe a developer has, a warehouse someplace that could then be refurbished? Yeah, it could go any, any manner to provide cover and shelter and yeah. that, right? But those front buildings are very cheap. I, I mean, there, there's not much to them. 
and uh, that sheriff in Texas got the used um, tents from okay. um, the surplus and <laughs> gave them baloney, put some tents up. Yeah, the ACL all over. That's a DVI. Who is is there a? I know DVI is here. Is is there like a downtown area? Is there a downtown? The downtown Shadco would be a good place for everybody to sign up and get right. involved yeah, in the downtown Shadco. I didn't mention that. Uh, where's Gary? Back here. Gary, look. If if. This is exactly what Shadco was created for. This is where people can bring problems right to, right to us. And it's a great way to interact with the law enforcement people in your area. Uh, even though you may not live down here, but you haven't, or you may do both. But if you, even if you just work down here, this Shadco would be a great thing for everybody to get involved in. And, uh, and that's one way, too, that we can get the word out uh, better to everyone about what's going on because that gives us a contact point uh, for you as well as through DVI and, and, and others. So, and, yeah, there's a sign up sheet going around. I got it right here. I'm just messing with okay. This is my last uh, question. Um, in my other life, I'm also president of the downtown council of the chamber. So we have to have an investigation of the concerning Thomas' perspective. So is that something that you want us to uh, kind of take to the chamber and those folks to see what, what kind of support we can get yes. from the chamber? In fact, I spoke to the president of the Does Jim Love have the. Jim Love's now. Yeah. yeah. He's a member of our council. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I gave this. I gave this. I gave this to, to, to y'all, and, and just to start the, the conversation. It's been out there long enough now. I think people are starting to go, hey, but, yeah, we like it. Let's but go there wasn't a call to action, but now I hear a call to action. So we exactly. Work. Exactly. So I'll take that message to the chamber. If that's it, right. Absolutely, take, take that message to the chamber and have somebody look at. I don't know how many different civic groups may be represented in here. But if, if just one person from that civic group, like the chamber, could get involved in this shed code, that will be the central conduit. And then you can take that information back to your different civic groups. So I, I would encourage everybody, particularly if you're involved in some other civic groups, like the chamber, uh, exchange group, or whoever it may be, get, get into this shed code and, and you be the representative that will be the conduit back to your back to your group. Are you ready to take this to the editorial board? The time being? I haven't seen anything in the paper about this idea, yeah. and it seems like you've been developing it with various people. Yeah. And maybe if we got some publicity in the Times Union, people began to talk about it. Well, I think, I think you too. might. I see Ross sitting back there, so he's yeah. he's here. He's here. Uh, and, and Ron, I think we talked about this before, right? You know, I, uh, well, you, you guys have written about it some. Right, some, yeah, but this is the first I've heard it. This is so it's been a big help. Thank you. There's a downtown Shadco meeting Wednesday of next week at 10 o'clock at the library. Third Wednesday of the month. Third Wednesday of every month. Sheriff, sure. could I ask you a question? Yes. In Hemming Plaza, there's signs out there, and it says no one is allowed in the Hemming Plaza from sundown to sunup. Right. But there's people. Is there some way? Is that non-enforceable or? No, they've been doing it. Like they the go through the the After um, we brought it up at Shadco, and um, they sent some guys, and they've been driving through there, and it it has been empty at night. I've been I've yeah. been watching. What time? Because yeah. I'm down there about 10, 11 o'clock. There's people in there. But look, but, you know, and I'll and I'll emphasize this again. That's not the answer. Right. Mm -hmm. But you, you can close the park and you can sweep them out of there, but they're going somewhere. We just won't run them off. Yeah, it's just like the birds. You can <laughs> run them out, but they're going somewhere. <laughs> we we have to get a place. Wait. Go ahead. I don't agree. That's not an answer. You can't just say I'm not going to arrest the drug dealers outside Windex. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying. That. I, I'm not. No, but, no, but that's what you are. The the, the, enfor the enforcement of the of the loitering at, at at the plaza is the same thing. Like no, you got to do something. No, what I'm saying is no. You can fix it for the plaza after Sunday. But that's not the answer. Because the problem is just move. All you've done is displace it. I want to solve it. 
And what we have always done for 20 years is try to displace it. Now we need to solve it. And, and, and an arrest will solve it if there's a deterrence in that arrest. I, I believe. They'll, they'll get tired of going to jail and walking 12 miles back to town. Well, and then I, hopefully I, I, go somewhere else. I, I totally agree, but you, you still have to arrest the people between now and the time oh, they put up your... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying we're not going to do that. We, we've increased the patrols now. I mean, we're, we're going to do that. Two people in one year is not an increase, but... Okay. Well, it's a lot better than that, anyway, in the last five, six months. Yeah. Talking about the source, like... The three places they get their lifts are downtown, Scotty's, the Shell, and Sam's. We've been talking about this forever, you know. Um, yes, those are their individual's business, and I wouldn't want them to tell me I couldn't ship packages, but that's why it's so convenient with the library and Scotty's and the park and all the people there for them to get the money. It's just a revolving door. That's why you can't get them out. So with the comforts of home, in the meantime, spread the benches out so they can't congregate as much, right. Right. and park a car in front of Scotty's so they can drink the beer by the time they leave Scotty's and throw the can right in my bushes in front of my building. And so they're walking out drinking them. And so, you know, that would deter a lot of it, you know, because if they know they can't get their beer, they're gonna move, they will move, but at least it's not harassing the business district. All right. We'll uh, look. We'll, we'll get together with the councilman, and uh, we'll, we'll find a rep from the mayor's office and uh, get get this thing going for y'all. All right. Just me. I think what we had, as they heard again, senior advocate down here, is a lot of good conversation, a lot of good ideas a lot of good expression but right now we're um, on mission and deeper street we don't need a band-aid or a piece of green we need that block cleared out it is so drug infested that okay. when we, we see we, the patrol cars come by and no, we, we, crime, we got we got it down okay when the and, crime was happening I couldn't even fly uh, fly down a patrol car. Right. I was on right. 911, and she told me to stay. Right. But they. Well, look, we're we're going to work on that block. And what I'd like what I'd like to ask you to do, and, and this is what I love about this is what I love about the, the Shadco. Come to the Shadco meeting. I uh, okay, and, and put it on these guys, and, and it's a great accountability piece for us. So, okay. Uh, all right. Well, listen. Thank thank y'all very much. We appreciate you and. Uh